Welcome to Scott Cooks. Today we're going to be using our Ninja Foodie to make a whole chicken. About uh, four and a half, five pound chicken. Uh, I've removed the uh, stuff from the center. And what we're going to do is I've got about five cloves of garlic. Just chopped up a little bit. About a quarter of a large uh, yellow onion. Half a cup of water. I'm going to be putting the water, the garlic, and the onions into the bottom of the pot. I'm going to take the chicken. I'm going to season it with my one of my other favorite seasonings, smokehouse maple. This stuff is really good on chicken. We'll be seasoning that pretty heavily. We're going to put the chicken in the crisper basket this time. And then we're going to set this basket right down in there on top of the liquid and the onions and the garlic. We're going to pressure cook it 15 minutes and we're going to do a quick release and then we're going to put it on air crisp for about 15 minutes and crisp it all up. And the reason for the garlic and the onions and the water, uh, need a little water for pressure of course, and from the chicken drippings and all we're going to have one heck of a sauce running on the bottom. Could could turn it into a gravy, could just uh, save it for a broth. It's going to be tasty, stay tuned. We've added a half a cup of water, the garlic and the onions, to the bottom of the pot. Okie doke, I've sprayed the uh, inside of the basket here with some nonstick spray. Heavily seasoned the chicken and dropped it right in there. And I know some recipes say you need to tie the legs. Well, it's tucked in there pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about tying them up. And uh, next step. There we go. Pressure lid. Make sure you're on seal. It's very important. And uh, pressure high as a default. And we want 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Go. And away we go. Check back in a little while. Come to pressure. Just now starting our 15 minutes. And I did want to add one thing I noticed hardly anybody ever talks about. There is a build up time to get to pressure. And everybody sort of leaves that out. So when you hear somebody say, oh, we're going to pressurize this and that for 15 minutes, you're thinking, okay, so I got uh, 15 minutes. But you need to plan ahead of time. Uh, that actually took about 11 minutes, uh, just about 11 minutes to get the pressure. So if you're trying to time a chicken to be ready, or anything, to be ready at a certain time uh, for dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever you're doing here, uh, got to add in that time. Now, of course, the amount of volume in the foodie is going to determine how long it takes to finally build the pressure. Uh, for example, when I do rice, you know, I don't have very much in there. I've got a cup of rice and a cup of water. Um, it, it comes up to pressure in just a couple minutes. But this was a huge chicken. So uh, over time, some experimentation. Keep some notes. Keep a notepad handy in your kitchen. And uh, just write stuff down. So next time, you know, if you're going 15 minutes longer than you thought you had to, you'll know to start 15 minutes earlier. Well, we're coming down the home stretch here. That was 15 minutes under pressure and about 10 minutes to build up to pressure. And um, what's going to happen? There we go. And it's going to switch to keep warm. There you go. Now it's just going to count up. Uh, but what we're going to do, and I highly recommend that you guys do this as well, use the back of a wooden spoon. Keep your hand away from this vent. We're going to go ahead and release the pressure. Now when I first do it, it's going to go make a noise and then I'm gonna flip it all the way and it's gonna get really loud and we're gonna let that pressure go off until that red button drops down okay there we go. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit and depending on what you got in there this could take a little while or it could just take a few minutes okay looks like the pressure is almost released we're just going to sit here and watch for that little button to drop. 
once the button drops it's safe to remove the lid and I'll show you a safe way to remove the lid so you don't burn yourself. So see that drop right there? So that means the pressure is gone and we can take the lid off, which we will. So what we're going to do is stop the unit, twist the lid. Now when we take the lid off we're going to lift it up and away up and away. So that's the initial burst of steam. We don't want it to hit us in the face. And let the liquid drain on back in. And remember this lid is smoking hot. So make sure you got a place to put it. That is cool. Okay. Well, maybe I should have tied those legs. See what they did? They separated out a little bit. And what I was hoping would happen I'm looking down inside. I want to make sure this chicken is all the way done. Uh, the air crisper will finish it up. So what we're going to do is drop the lid. We're going to go to air, air crisp. We can move the temperature to 400. We're going to set the time. Uh, we're going to start with 15 minutes. And we're going to check it. And then we'll increase by 5 minutes um, as we keep checking on it. Now, this chicken is a little large, so I am sitting eh, fairly close to the top. So I'm going to be careful. I uh, might have to flip it, which would be hard to do because it's pressure cooked. It's probably very soft, so I probably can't flip it. But Anywho, there we go. Uh, we're going to give her 15 minutes and uh, get in there and check it out. And I think you can see why we put it in the crisper basket now, because it would be very hard to pull out and add to the crisper basket later. So if you're going to do one of these, you know, um, I'd probably stick in the three and a half to four pound range. It's a little smaller chicken. Better for the six and a half quart. Um, the eight quarts are out, but nobody can really get them except special people. Uh, they're not out to the consumer yet, uh, but they will be soon. Quick note about tender crisp mode. So anything that's using this uh, convection oven lid, um, you can lift the lid at any time. In fact, they got a sticker on here about it. Uh, all that happens when you lift the lid, it just pauses it. It doesn't do anything but pause it. Um, you can t lift the lid, look, get in there, stir stuff, check things, drop the lid back down. It just takes off. You don't have to push anything. I'll uh, demonstrate. Lid up. Okay, see so it just halt, just paused it. Lid down, and she took off without any intervention from me. That is a really nice feature. <clears throat> of course, you don't want to check too often because you're letting the heat out. Let's talk about the back of the foodie while we're waiting on this. There's a vent on the back. Um, I've got my hand a foot and a half away and I can feel really hot air. Uh, we measured it a couple episodes ago and uh, it gets over 150 degrees. So you want to make sure that wherever you're going to set this thing there is plenty of space, so don't put it on a counter like right up to the wall because you'll melt the paint. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, there's a drip tray here that nobody ever talks about. Uh, so if you do a lot of steaming, a lot of pressurizing, um, moisture will drip. And you just pull that out, wash it out. I just did a um, internal temperature test with my little thermometer here. Um, I'm a little off, but I do have some more time to go. I like to get it about 170 for chicken, uh, near to thigh, 170, 175 to be safe. Um, you don't want to undercook chicken, folks. Um, in this thing, uh, you're not really going to dry it out, so we're just going to uh, keep going. You know, we got almost, what, eight and a half more minutes to go, and then we're going to go up five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So we're not only just looking for the crispiness, we're looking for the doneness as well, and if we're gonna get more crispy before we're done what we're gonna do is stop the air crisp and we'll probably jump right over to bake roast crank it up to 400 and uh, just roast it like you're roasting in the oven just to finish it off then we'll go switch back to air crisp that's the beauty of this device so many different ways you can arrange things uh, this is a really nice nice tool to have a little, still a little off on my temperature um, I'm afraid if I continued with the air crisp alone I'd over crisp it before I got it to the temperature I wanted internal temperature 
So what I've done is just switched it over. It did. It finished at 15 minutes, and I'm doing the bake roast. And what that's going to do is turn the bottom on and the top. Um, and if I think that's going the wrong way, I can always go over to sear, saute, or you know, just cook from the bottom. Uh, lots of options. We're getting close with the temperature. This isn't far off now. Um, it's a little tricky figuring out exactly how long to keep an item under pressure per pound. Um, if I did this one again with this size chicken, uh, I would probably do it for 20 minutes, 22 minutes maybe total. Slowly creeping up there, 165. She's gonna level out about 170, that's perfect for me. FDA says 165. And what we're gonna do is just finish her off. Air crisp, let's go to 400. Doesn't matter what you set it on because we're gonna, we're not gonna let it go to the end. Let's go hit it a couple minutes and serve it up. Moving the chicken from the crisper basket. It's gonna be a little difficult because it's gonna tend to try to fall apart. I have these X-Chef gloves, super high temperature gloves. Um, I may have to just sort of reach in there and grab the whole chicken with them, which is fine. It has these non-slip things on it. Um, could maybe use a couple spatulas, wooden spoons. We're gonna find out in just a second. I'm just hitting the air crisp for a few more minutes because I got a few other side dishes still going here. Here's the finished product. I did not need the gloves took my spatula inside, gently lift it up and out. She's cooked all the way through. There's the finished product. Pulled away from the leg a little bit. 